I became interested in Chinese medicine when I'm three. I know my sister has asthma symptom, but my father told me gonna go to an herbal store. He bring this formula, herbal formula. I saw my sister drink this tea. Only less than one hour, the asthma symptom disappear. Even I look at back, my sister, 50 years, the asthma never come back. That's why the moment I see, say, that's amazing. Other people I see because never they take that time, you begin to use Western medicine and they and get worse and worse. But my sister never take any chemical medicine, only use the ancient Chinese medicine. I saw that's what happened. I just began to get curious and pay attention to things around me. I see many people take the same formula and they get better. And they never under drug for a lifetime. But other people, they don't know this herbal ancient Chinese formula. They have to control by Western medicine like steroid. Steroid is have side effect and they take steroids, low dose every day in the long run and have more po other problems. That's the first reason make make me interested. And second reason, when I'm five, two years later, play in a river next to my village, and I guess I fall to the river, close to that experience. Uh, old lady in a village go to the river, wash clothing. Usually, uh, every morning they go wash the clothes. But that time is the evening time. I'm so lucky that they saw hair in the water floating. She discovered that as somebody in the water. And they take me out, save my life. In the old day, the countryside, we don't have a hospital. Actually, I feel so thankful. And see, that's why I'm strongly 100% on to learn Chinese medicine to pay back to the people in my hometown because they, they saved my life. I want to study the Chinese medicine. I have a mission. That's why I'm not worried about anything. Life come and go. 
See, because I died one time, not worry about dying over. No Have a hyper pressure. You take the paw, can determine and look at look at the tongue in her if she she is excessive young energy or deficiency. She like when I see the blood pressure two hundred forty, but is she is deficiency? I know because I know her. And the paw is it give me information deficiency. Then I need to wise engine or kidney young form the two raise the energy, then the horsepower pump, the blood pressure down. But in another case, your father might is young, excessive, too much young energy, then I have to treat him opposite. Same thing, high blood pressure, we have too much or too little energy. That means it's not enough you put it in, too much we have to resist, take it out. Like diabetic, type 2 diabetic, same thing. Have to see if your kidney excessive, young energy or Kidney, in, kidney young deficiency. Example, basic or uncommon sense. You ask you, I ask you, say you are hot or cold. See, hot, you need cool down. Cold, you, you need to put heat. Example, you young, ex, young deficiency, people need lamb and meat to raise their energy. Otherwise, you need wild ginseng or angelica, like I get to her. She have a dip, like anemic or energy low weak. I get her the red gentian and the dang and you take it, your energy come back instead of to it forever. Take an iron pill or something. It's too simple. Last month, last year when he was he was born, one month with. Caesar and fever have flu, and a fever cannot come down hospital life in intensive care for five months. But the last hospital tell them, say, you take the baby home to die to heaven. But they, after they go home, they call me. I get them formula and bring down fever, and also I find out that's because baby Alice to cow milk, and they've been born, get told, formula. Cow milk is healthy for baby. Mother's meal not, not healthy. That's commercial. And all the, most of the young mother right now stop breastfeeding because terrorists and commercial. That's why so many babies have problems because cow milk. And right now, she, only next day, the fever come down when they go home. Take the herb and stop the cow milk and the baby get better. Right now, they still have to learn how to take care of them. One day, I could see 10 children get Caesar come see me. Because Caesar in TCM, the root cause is a phlegm. 
the, the flame blocker channel, the brain get a wrong signal. We call it wing condition. I just tell them to stop the meal in dairy, three months. Actually, they, they get better and just do acupressure, open up the neck and shoulder. The body heals itself instead of take a, a pill. NTC is a pill, lifetime. A lot of time, even NTC is a pill, not working either. But open the blockage and stop the meal, and they get better. Zhuya 十四斤麦就是学位图我已经忘了就是要学习无忧我做到现在还要看地图吗我天天开车上班回家开了二十年就不用看地图了还需要学位图吗你如果永远没有放下书的话没有办法进入当下打不对中立鸟问你这个压力
but you, you feel weak. That means called deficiency or balance. Then we have to look at the food or herb that can strengthen your qi, yang qi or yin qi, two kinds of energy. You find your balance. That means every case root cause different. Then we have to teach the patient how to find the root cause. When they understand the root cause, that means they know how to prevent them. Western medicine look at arthritis is just autoimmune problem. What means autoimmune problem? Your T cell attack the joint. Then you create pain and inflammation. And the Western treatment is like cover up the symptom, take a painkiller or steroid, cover up the inflammation and treat forever because say no cure. But in Eastern medicine, we have to find a root cause. That means why your immune, your T cell attack your own joint, create information. Because the problem, your joint pain is not from the joint itself because somewhere else energy get blocked. Because the headquarters send a wrong signal. Because whole body by electric system get blocked. We look at a uh, by electric system signal. Not just look at the joint, but Western medicine look at the joint problem. We don't look at the joint problem, we look at the channel. That's a, the energy system get blocked. Your body get a wrong signal. Then we open the blockers, then your T cell doesn't attack your joint because you're fighting yourself. You are the one who create problem. Either you stress or you have an accident, blockers in somewhere else, or you have wrong posture. Where's the blockers? That's what TCM to find. When you open the blockers, we don't have to treat symptoms. Then we use your problem just this piece. This piece is up naturally. Good forever, instead of treat forever. That's the difference. The patient understand the root cause. The patient down the line become doctor themselves. <laughs> My grandfather, my grandmother, both learned the medicine. But my grandparent is studied from my grandfather uncle in the Wu village. And my grandparent taught my father. My father is my first teacher. I studied with uh, seven years old. But before seven years, I'm not accepted as a student, but I just see my father every day, help patient to heal, use herbal medicine, acupressure, and energy healing, Tai Chi and Qigong too. When it's seven years old, I tell my father, I want to be a formal student. He tell me I have to do the Wu stand, stand up, do the meditation, like stay still, one hour every day, finish 100 day, then become a formal student. Then he going to teach me the Tai Chi and Qigong movement and also teach herbal medicine formula. Everyone want to study this Chinese medicine system, have to do a 100 day foundation. That means do the wool stand or horse stand. Stand up, stay still for one hour every day, 100 day. You need to stop one day, you start over again. It's 100 day straight. That mean you saw your, your serious. Just feel like home, same, same. Because my my home, I grew up here. Yeah. I know everybody still. I'm old uncle when I'm ten. I'm old, old uncle because my generation is lineage. Have to yeah. see learn to because they are related. Even people they seventy. I'm only twenty. They call me uncle. 
I'm old, always here. <laughs> My uncle. That's when I'm grow up, when I'm young. I always have Kung Fu tea with him. We see each other every day. In this Chinese medical school system called Feng Yan TCM, followed by Dong Feng. He part the Chinese medicine in three kingdom. This is one of the spiritual famous doctor in that time. The story about Dong Feng is he come from Fujian province, China, and he want to help spread the Chinese medicine to China. He go from one province to next province. That city is gonna so poor people hungry, not enough food to eat, and so many sick patients. He decide gonna help in this problem because he know how to farm and to he know this area the best is to grow apple tree he told the people farmer but they don't believe him he thought he's just a doctor he don't know he he can help economic actually nobody listened to him and he decided gonna be do the barter system he took one patient if you get well he don't take money. He say you go fight apple tree for me. And after three years, he the whole mountain grow apple tree. Word by mouth, pass around. Everybody want to buy the apple fruit. And he say you trade with one bag of rice. Then he have a lot of rice in in the warehouse when. People hungry that night, no food, starving. He opened up a warehouse, he saved a million life. He teach so many students. He have many disciples study medicine and the some system with him. Nobody here yet. She got number one. <laughs> I didn't see her by more than 10 or 20 years. With so many aunties, uncle, my father, mother's side. Big, big family. I want, I want to see all my family members. They take me forever. But they see, see me in here. <laughs> Chinese medicine is a Taoist medicine that continue to my father's 19th generation in the lineage. And right now I go back to hometown. See, I talk to everybody and they say, oh, my grandfather practiced this medicine, but they, they don't continue. Do you know who practiced medicine? I say, I, I learned from my father because everybody in my hometown know my father practiced this medicine. Right now, everybody in my hometown, Pulling County, Pulling City, they're asking me to go back to teach them because they say they miss that kind of medicine. When they see somebody have tumor grow and they don't need to do surgery, that's a go back to 1970. When they, they see their grandfather put the herbal cream, put on the tumor, after one of the tumor disappear without surgery, and they say, but feel sorry that that time they they young they they don't push it and they don't learn from the grandfather. Now they want to study with me because she I talk tell them how I do things. Say yes, that's what my grandfather do. I was well until about eleven years ago, or so I thought. At that point, I got a bad virus. And then I just didn't get better, and I got sicker and sicker and sicker. It was so painful to move that in order to get out of bed in the morning, I had to turn on my side. My husband had to lift my hair 
and so that I didn't have to contract my neck muscles. Then he would turn my head. Then he would push me out of bed into a standing position. So I was in that state for almost three months because they could not diagnose what was wrong with me. The first time I saw the infectious disease person, they took 40 tubes of blood. At that point, they still weren't sure what was going on. And then they found another blood marker that indicated it's an early sign for multiple myeloma. And then they started down the path of, is this a cancer and this is a paraneoplastic process. They really didn't know what was going on. With all of this happening and with this marker for multiple myeloma, they also started doing bone marrow biopsies. And so I ended up having five bone marrow biopsies. And at one point they even thought that it had crossed over to be disease and started talking to me about prognosis and life expectancy. And it was very scary. Fortunately, those numbers backed off. So I decided that they didn't, this was it. This was as much as Western medicine had to offer me at this point. So I started to investigate what else is out there. And this was my first real time of really starting to look into this because I was raised as a Western doctor. Why did I get this autoimmune disease and when did it really start? I graduated medical school at 21 years old. So you might imagine <laughs> accurately that there was a lot of stress involved in that. About Four years ago, a friend of mine that was very ill with a recurrence of breast cancer called me up and said, my therapist recommended that I go see Dr. Ming Wu and I'm scared. Would you come with me? And that was the first time that I met uh, Dr. Wu. I started out, I just took his Qigong classes. I did that for a while. He never tried to push me. You know, he kind of took me where I was. You know, he knew my story. He never told me particularly that he was, a, you know, an herbalist or that he did these different treatments. Over time, I'd ask a question. And, you know, well, how about the Tai Chi? How is Tai Chi different from Qigong? And he would say, you go deeper. You go deeper into the meditation, you go deeper into your body, you go deeper into the silence. What I found with the Qigong is it switched me from that stress reaction, the fight-flight reaction, the sympathetic nervous system to this relaxed, parasympathetic, vagal relaxation response. I found that when my body was calm, my mind became calm. You know, I always talked about mind-body. I'm a psychiatrist. I talked with my patients about mind-body and I believed mind-body and then I realized I was just saying words. Qigong gave me a doorway into appreciating what mind-body means. So now they all seem to be kind of going together, the Tui Na and the Qigong, and I had started to do the Tai Chi, and they all seem to feed on each other to help me calm my body and calm my mind. And what I found was I was able to lower my Embrel dose, which is the injection that I took on a weekly basis from 50 milligrams once a week to 12 and a half milligrams a week, which was amazing. Dr. Wu suggested, you know, a way to do this, which is, you know, he said, we'll take the medicine and just extend it by a day. Ming does not try to be a guru. He doesn't try to tell you, this is what you need to do. His, his, as he says, the most important question is, who am I? And that confused me for a long time because sometimes he would say things like, I am light, I am air, 
And I sat with that again for a long time, you know, what does that mean? And then I realized what he meant is it's, a que it's not a question that we ask and answer. It's a question that we ask all the time because we're always changing. He wants to be someone that teaches and spreads this word, the, the word of these simple tools and techniques that you can do to help yourself. And I think his goal is really to train an army of teachers so that these ancient healing techniques can be passed on. We have a relationship. Trust each other, make it work better. See, we don't trust each other. She's not gonna work. You will build a relationship. We work together as a team. She is our team, not just me. But the problem is, you have to believe. I have to believe myself first before can you can come come to work with me. It's, it's your team. I'm leader. I lead in you. You have no confidence. You lead in the other way. <laughs> the fear. See.